Welcome to another I2R Tech Lighting Solutions tutorial video. In this video, I will tell you about an amazing feature that automates the zoom function on moving heads. But first, let me tell you why you want it. Think about a single light with a fixed beam angle, spotting a fixed target. If the beam angle is too narrow, then you can't illuminate the target hole and if it is too wide, then it's not a spotlight anymore, but a wash. A wash is not what's intended for follow spotting because it doesn't highlight the target, plus the light's intensity gets weak as it is dispersed all over. A very valid reason of why you want to use a moving head with a motorized zoom to do follow spotting. So the beam angle can be adjusted to the target size. Okay. Now, let's add some complexity. If the target moves closer or farther from the light, then the beam angle needs to be adjusted accordingly. And this could be done manually for one light. But what happens when a system such as this one, that uses several lights at the time, has each light at a different distance from a moving target? Each light will need a different beam angle or zoom proportional to its relative distance to the target. Now that can't be done manually on real time. It just can't. So here is why you want this one of a kind feature. When the auto zoom is enabled on a light via the GUI, then the beam angle or zoom is independently calculated relative to each proportional light to target distance and automatically set for each light. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> Bragging rights, anyone? This feature is what makes it a true multi-light follow spot system. We could have made the feature exclusively for our lights, but in the spirit of universality, we allow full customization of this feature, so any light with a zoom can be used. And because of this, the auto zoom feature needs the GUI running to work. Configuring the auto zoom on new moving heads goes as follows. Prerequisite, the light's library must have a zoom channel. Get a copy of the light's datasheet, then open the light parameters management tool at the GUI. Click on the pertinent light and enable auto zoom. Then fill in the following parameters. The value target height is self-explanatory and it should be left at six feet for most cases, but it could be changed if needed. The value beam minimum angle is the narrower beam angle that the light can do in degrees. The value beam maximum angle is the wider beam angle that the light can do in degrees. The value angle zoom minimum DMX value is the DMX value for the narrower beam angle. The value angle zoom maximum DMX value is the DMX value for the wider beam angle. If the light happens to have a prism function, the prism could be used to make the beam even wider when spotting targets that get extremely close to the light, when the zoom goes out of range. Like with the auto zoom feature, the auto prism feature can be set up as follows. Prerequisite, the light's library must have a prism channel. Enable the auto prism and fill in the following parameters. The value Auto prism on DMX value is the DMX value that turns the prism on. The value out of prism of DMX value is the DMX value that turns the prism off. These settings will stick to the library name, meaning that any moving head that uses the same library will inherit and share these auto zoom settings. You can enable the auto zoom feature for each applicable light individually, as needed. Thank you for watching this tutorial and don't forget to watch the entire series to get a good grasp of all the potential and different possibilities for the Moving Head Controller 2.0.